I often get asked how to get started with test-driven development. One of the trickier parts is how you deal with the inputs and outputs. I recorded a session of me doing a simple TDD coding carter uh, a little while ago. As part of that exercise, I included a very simple case uh, of me dealing with the outputs. Although this example is simple, I do the same for much more complicated cases too. So in this episode, let's take a look at that part of the problem. How do we deal with the inputs and outputs in test-driven development? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content, uh, hit like as well. I'd like to begin by thanking our sponsors, Harness, Equal Expert, Octopus, and Specflow. They're all helping us to develop our channel, so please do support them by checking out their links in the description below this video. This is a follow-on from the earlier episode, Getting Started with Test Driven Development. So do check that out if you missed it, but there should be no problem watching this one first. If you'd like to see the whole exercise with fewer edits, you can check the whole thing out on my training course site. Check out other great courses while you're there too. Links in the description below. In the first episode, we did the FizzBuzz exercise using CyberDojo, the site where we were able to practice test-driven development within, your, within a web browser. CyberDojo is a great place to practice TDD and it's free for non-commercial uses but I'd encourage you to donate, donate anyway because all of the proceeds go to helping kids learn about computers. Here is the test that we ended up with. Lots of small steps to incrementally define the behaviour that we wanted. And here's the code that I wrote to make the test pass. When describing the problem, I pointed out that it really is in two separate parts. There's this part, the fizzbuzz part, but the problem in the coding carter said, print the numbers from one to 100 and do the fizzbuzz thing. So we've got to deal with the printing of the numbers. I could have chosen to deal with both parts of the problem at the same time, but I'd consider that to be a separation of concerns mistake. Better for testability and for better design if we don't. I, cho I chose to separate the rendering of the numbers from the counting and the display. And as you will see in this demo, I've also a very, very simply also separated the display from the counting. The result is in each case simpler, but also more generic code. This largely driven by striving to make it possible to test the code. This is one of the huge advantages of test driven development in my opinion. So how do we solve this part of the problem? Let's take a look. Let's write our first test. Should, um, so what do we want to do? Uh, well, we want something that's going to display each number, I suppose. So let's imagine designing something like that. So let's should display each number. Okay. Um, there's my test case. So um, we're going to need some numbers. So numbers equals, so we're going to create that. And I want to be able to measure the ability of this code to display. This is something I've talked about in videos before about testing at the edge. We're now at the edge of a system. We will now want to actually touch on the display, but I still want to test that. So I'm going to isolate, I'm going to abstract my display. In this case, that's really, really simple because I don't need anything very clever. Um, but so let's create, I'm going to, I'm going to create something that's going to do the display for me so that I can figure out what's going on. So I'm, I'm going to imagine um, uh, I've got a function like this that takes some text um, and that's my display. That's going to just display stuff. So I'm, go I'm imagining now that I'm going to pass that in 
to my numbers um, because what that will allow me to do is it will allow me to be able to um, interact with it in some way. So here's the display and in this case what am I interested in the display? Self dot um, uh, dis uh, display count or something like that uh, equals um, yeah so dot display count plus one so what I'm going to do is that each time something's displayed instead of displaying it I'm just going to record that so I've just realized that now I need a setup for my um, test case so that each time I'm going to run that so I'm going to do self dot display count equals zero so I can initialize that and while I'm at it I think I might just do this because I'm going to need this for each test so numbers so that's going to become uh, these are going to become member variables uh, that looks okay to me uh, I'm doing quite a lot of work here actually before I start this isn't this isn't a great example perhaps but but I've probably got too much of the design in my head um, so for my test what do I want to do I've got some numbers so um, self dot numbers and let's say what we'd like to do is uh, show numbers uh, and let's say how many numbers we want to do. This is a test. We don't want to run a test through 100 iterations every time. There's no point. There's no value to that. For this case, we want it to represent iterations. So we probably want an idea of many. So two is many uh, in, in test language. So let's say we're going to do that and we're going to give it some text. Text. So we'll just say text. We don't care what the text is. For, no. Uh, that's not going to be the text. That's going to be something else. Let's let's ignore that for now. So let's say we just want to show numbers for those things. And what we're going to assert is that after we've called show numbers, that's for the number, the, the, this number, number two, is the number of numbers that we'd like to show, the count of numbers, then we have shown two numbers. So we should be able to self.assert equal uh, to self dot display count I hope you can see what I'm doing there I'm going to pass in the display which I've done here <coughs> um, and each time and that's going to get called and it's going to get called this many times uh, and I'm just asserting that that's the case. So what do we need? We need show numbers on numbers for this to compile. So def show numbers self. Um, and it had um, the count, the number uh, could be range or limit or something like that count will do for now. Um, what else do we need from our, for, for, to make our test make sense? Um, numbers, we, oh, we, need an init we need to be able to record the display. So, so we're going to need an initializer for this. Def. Uh, display. So, and we want to hold on to that. Good. Right, so now, what do we want? We've given the count of numbers, so we want to go for, oops, for i in range count self.display some text. We don't care what that is at the moment. So I think that makes the code 
uh, that actually makes it pass. So I've done too much stuff. I've done too much work. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to make that pass. Step back. We want a failing test first. So I was getting ahead of myself. So um, we're going to run the numbers, run the display. We expect that to fail now. So if we run this assertion, 2 is not equal to 0. I should have said that beforehand, but that was what we were expecting because we haven't actually displayed any numbers. So that makes sense. Um, so let's go and make that test pass. So let me put the code back in that I wrote earlier on when I was getting ahead of myself. So for i in range count uh, display text, that should do. So that should mean that we 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 we, we do this for uh, each number. So let's predict that that's going to work. Green, and it does work. So now we're iterating, we're displaying. So we've got something working. We've got some numbers that we, that are working. Um, so now what we'd like is that we'd like each one of those each time that that's called. Um, for the number to be rendered in some way by Fizzbuzz in our case. So def um, test should uh, render uh, each number. Uh, should render each number self colon. So self dot numbers dot show numbers. So the first test is testing that we've got the right number of numbers. Uh, this test is testing that we're going to be able to render each number. So let's do another one of these little helper functions. Let's try that. So we could do something like def render self number um, return x plus number. So we're going to get the number, we're going to return x and that number um, uh, as a string. Uh, that ought to work, that makes sense to me. So show numbers. Uh, we only need one now. We don't. We, we don't need to iterate around this. So we could just say um, self numbers one. That seems okay. And what we're expecting to see self dot assert equal is we're expecting to see. Um, on the display, I suppose. Uh, oh, we could do something smarter. So let's do something else. So, so what I have in mind, so one of the things that I haven't done very clearly yet, so what we're going to do is going to pass in the renderer. So we're going to do that. So self.render, which means that we also have to do that on here because that's the signature to render, which means that we need to change numbers so that that takes a renderer and let's do let's do something a little funky self dot uh, displayed let's keep the history of what we displayed equals so we'll have a little array uh, each time we do this we'll increment that and we will self dot displayed dot append text. That sounds reasonable. So now we could do something, we could say, okay, so the first one is x1. <coughs> remember x, remember here we've got x plus the number, uh, and that's going to be self dot displayed. Um, brackets. It's actually going to be zero, isn't it? Because it's a zero array. That makes sense. So at the moment, so that seems like our test. 
So let me just reiterate what this test is doing. So we're going to, we've modified the show numbers method so that it takes a renderer as an argument. Uh, we're going to assert that uh, what was actually displayed, still on the same display as before, this function, um, is um, a rendered version of the number. Um, and so that should be our test. What I expect at the moment is that this will fail because our assertion will, here will fail. What I'm expecting is that the value that we got in displayed was actually just one. Uh, no, actually it'll be text because we hard coded it. Text. So, um, so the value that we get in display will be text rather than x1. So let's run that. I expect it to fail. There's my prediction. Yep, x1 is not equal to text, so that's good. So let's go and make that pass. So what we could do now is that we could go uh, render brackets i. That's our number. Uh, i starts at zero, so I think that we probably, do we want i plus one? We might want i plus one. Uh, yeah, I think we want i plus one. Uh, so I think that's green, so let's see what we get. X plus number. You got a compilation error. So what have I done wrong? Oh, you can't concatenate string and int. So yeah, fair enough. So in my test here, that should be strut number. There we go. Let's try that again. Green. There we go. So there's our test passed. So just to finish off and to show that it all works, let's just do the real test. So I think, so I'm not gonna make any assertions, but I think that if we run that on the console, it's gonna show FizzBuzz, it's gonna print out all the numbers. So it'll do all of the other tests as well, but let's do that. So I think all the tests are still gonna pass because there's no change in assertions. So let's just do that. And there we get, there's our standard out, there's FizzBuzz solved um, all the way up to 100. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope that's demonstrated some interesting things of test driven development, but also some interesting things about Cyber Dojo. Please do go and check out Cyber Dojo. It's in a very good cause. If you like what you see, practice test driven development. If you want to try and learn test driven development, do what I've just done, something like I've just done. Pick one of the, the exercises from Cyber Dojo. Do that for half an hour every day for a couple of weeks and the same one over and over again. And by that time, at the end of that time, I guarantee you that you'll have a different kind of insight into test driven development. Um, and I, you know, the starting point of being able to apply that more effectively in your own code base. I think, I think this is an excellent way to learn and I think CyberDojo is a fantastic resource with all of these different technologies at your fingertips tips to exercise um, your practice. Um, let me know in the comments what you make of it. Let me know in the comments which, um, which coding carter you picked and which, what you liked about it and what you didn't. Thank you very much for watching.